is where his dogs are. That's why he now lives here in Connecticut, more than an hour's drive from the city. It's a terribly necessary balance in one's life to have. If you have, as we do, the kind of busy life you have in New York, you do need to have a place that you simply collapse. Blast bought the three revolutionary houses a country retreat in 1976. Since then, he's decorated it three times to find the right mood for his permanent home. Gone are the chintzes and early American furniture. Instead, Blass has chosen a more austere, pared-down look with very little color. The entrance is a whole lot. In every apartment or house seems to me to be an important indication of what the rest of the house or, like, or what the owner is like. And here we have a, there's a huge bust of Hercules, marvelous old French chair that belonged to Christian Dior. That's a particular favorite of mine. Uh, it, it's a room that has that that is inviting without being austere, <clears throat> but it isn't it isn't in any way fussy. The living room was inspired by the library in the home of 18th century British architect Sir John Sloan, which is now a museum in London. I'm always most attracted to libraries in anyone's house. I think that to have a room of this size, with a center table, bookcase of books, a room that you for a scholar, for somebody who's doing some research. The library table is actually an English gaming table. It was a gaming table, yes. It was probably one of a kind, God knows for what game, but it, it works perfectly as a library table, too. All your favorite pieces are in that room. Some of the, Even some of the pictures are among my favorites, the Danish pictures, which I thought of, which I particularly like. I started collecting about 10 years ago. And one of the reasons I like Scandinavian paintings is that because of the juxtaposition of the light and in the room in which they are uh, painted. There's a wonderful bust, too, of, of Octavian, the emperor, of, uh, later the emperor Augustus, done in 58 B.C., which I, is a favorite recent piece. It's only an acquisition I've had about a year. There's a mix in the period of furniture, too. Yes, but primarily it's English. Even, even a piece that I may have found in Antwerp or in another place it turns out to be English. The dining room has three very important maps on the wall. Yes, it's, they're part of a quartet that had belonged to Louis XVI. Um, they are French maps of the, of the world, of the four hemispheres. And they have three, I only have wall space for three, so I have the other one in the hall. Dining table is Danish, as are the two side tables. I think interesting on the side tables are a pair of, of English silver, very massive and very grand candelabra, which have nothing to do with the rest of the house. But I rather like that, too, the contrast of something of that sort. The two horse figures add movement, don't they? Yes, they're German, actually, and they're, uh, they're 16th century, beautifully executed. The bedroom you consider the most successful room you've ever decorated? Well, it's because it's the most successful, most personal room for me. It's, it has very little in it. It's all brown and white. I think it's sort of my homage to uh, Billy Baldwin, uh, because it's sort of a room that, that uh, Baldwin would have approved, would have liked. It has a striped bed, otherwise it's all brown and white. That's Bill Blass at Home in the Country.